Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today's Monday, June 20th, 2022. Today, I'm going to recap the weekend's Game 2 of the Stanley Cup Final and look ahead to tonight's Game 3. The weekend's Major League Baseball, WNBA, Major League Soccer games. Look ahead to today's baseball games. We have the Men's College World Series going on. We have golf. We have NASCAR. News and notes from the weekend and best bet. We'll start with Stanley Cup Final. Um... Saturday night was game two, and the Avalanche put on an Avalanche. Seven nothing winners over the Lightning to take a 2 0 series lead. The number three starting game with two goals, Kale McCarr. Number two starting game with 16 saves on 16 shots, Darcy Kemper. And the number one starting game with two goals, Valerie Nishuskin. This is easily the worst loss the Lightning have had in a single postseason game. In this run. Um, first period. Valeri Nishkuskin on the power play. From. Andre Burakovsky. And. Alex Newhook. That give. The Avs a one off the lead. Then. Josh Manson scores the start of the postseason. From Andrew Cogliano. And Newhook. Two nothing. Um, Avs. I almost said bolts. Oops. Um. Then Andre Burakovsky is third of the postseason. Assist from Devin Taves and Miko Rotten in 3 0 the Navs. Second period, Valerian Nishuskin is eighth of the postseason from Miko Rotten in 4 0 the Navs. Then the Avs go up 5 0 on a goal by Darren Helm. Assist from Logan O'Connor. Third period. Avs go up 6-0 on a short-handed goal by Kale McCarr. Assist by Andrew Cagliano. And then McCarr again on the power play. Assist from McKinnon and Rotten in 7 nothing Avs. But this was just, like I said, an avalanche. No pun intended. And it resumes tonight. 8 o'clock on ABC. The Lightning hosting the avalanche in Game 3. It's a pick em each way. Over on their six. Over is even money. Under is minus 122. Abs minus one of his plus 220. Lightning plus one of his minus 280. So Abs favor on the puck line. Money line is a pick em. I'm going with the Lightning. Third time's a charm. I know I picked them every time. But they're just due. Um, and I think that they want to show that. They're not this bad. And I think that I know the Avalanche are awesome. They've been this team pretty much the entire season. But the Lightning aren't this bad. They're not as bad as what they showed in Game 2. They could have won Game 1. This should be a 1-1 series, I think. And the Lightning probably think that way. And you're never in trouble in a playoff series until you lose at home. And the Lightning proved that against the Rangers in the previous round. So I'm taking the Lightning minus 110 against the Avs to get on the board in this best of seven series. All right, now I'll move on to Major League Baseball. We will go over the games from the weekend and look ahead to everything going on today. Friday, double under game one, fills over the Nationals 5-3. Cubs over the Braves 1 zip. Orioles over the Rays 1 zip. Brewers over the Reds 5 4. Double letter game 2. Phils over the Nats 8 7 and 10. Giants over the Pirates 2 zip. Yankees over the Blue Jays 12 3. Mets over the Marlins 10 4. Red Sox over the Cardinals 6 5. Rangers over the Tigers 7 0. Astros over the White Sox 13 3. Rocks over the Padres 10 4. Royals over the A's 5 1. D backs over the Twins 7 2. Mariners over the Angels 8 1. And the Guardians over the Dodgers 2 1 and 10. Saturday, Cubs over the Braves 6-3, Yanks over the Blue Jays 4-zip, Giants over the Pirates 7-5, Rays over the Orioles 7-6, Royals over the Ace 2-zip, White Sox over the Astros 7-zip, Mets over the Marlins 3-2, Brewers over the Reds 7-3, Tigers over the Rangers 14-7, Angels over the Mariners 4-2 and 10 in double letter game 1, Phils over the Nats 2-1 and 10, Dodgers over the Guardians 7-1, Cards over the Red Sox 11-2, Rocks over the Pods 5-4, Double letter game two, Angels over the Mariners, three zip, and the Twins over the D backs, 11 to 1. 
And yesterday, the Nats over the Phillies, 9-3. to three. Nats are 24-46. and 46. The Phillies are 36-32. and 32. Pirates over the Giants, 4-3. to three. The Pirates, 26-39. and 39. San Francisco, 37-28. and 28. This game was on a walk-off homer by rookie Jack Swinski. So, that was a pretty cool that he hit three homers in the game, including the walk-off winner. Red Sox over to Cardinals six to four. The Red Sox thirty six and thirty one. St. Louis thirty eight and thirty. Orioles over to Rays two to one. Orioles thirty and thirty eight. Rays thirty six and thirty. Blue Jays over to Yankees ten to nine as they come back from eight three down. Toronto thirty eight and twenty eight. Yankees forty nine and seventeen. Marlins over the Mets six to two. The Marlins twenty nine and thirty five. Mets forty four and twenty four. Brewers over the Reds six to three. The Brewers thirty eight and thirty. Cincinnati twenty three and forty three. Tigers over the Rangers seven to three. The Tigers twenty six and forty. Texas thirty one and thirty five. Braves over the Cubs six nothing. The Braves thirty eight and twenty nine. Chicago twenty five and forty one. Rockies over the Padres eight to three. Rockies thirty and thirty seven. San Diego forty one and twenty seven. A's over the Royals, 4-zip. A's 23-45, KC 23 and 42. Angels over the Mariners, 4-zip. Uh, Angels 33 and 36. Seattle 29-39. Um, Guardians over the Dodgers, 5-3. The Guardians 34 and 28. Dodgers 40 and 25. D-backs over the Twins, 7-1. D-backs 32 and 36. Twins 38 and 30. And the Astros over the White Sox, 43 on Sunday Night Baseball. The Astros 41 and 25, and the White Sox 31 and 33. Now we look ahead to today's games. There's only nine of them, it looks like. One o'clock, you have the Marlins and the Mets. Trevor Rogers and David Peterson. I would assume the Mets are favored. Yes, minus one sixty four. The Marlins are plus one thirty eight. Over on their eight overs minus one fifteen. Unders minus one hundred five. Marlins plus one half is minus one forty two. Mets minus one half is minus. Or, or, I'm sorry, plus one eighteen. Trevor Rogers has not played out to what Miami has hoped for yet. I'm going to say over eight minus one fifteen. Seven o'clock. You have the Cubs and the Pirates. Caleb. Killian and JT Brubaker. Um, Pirates minus 110. Cubs minus 106. Over other 8. Overs minus 120. Others minus 102. Cubs minus 1 off is plus 152. Pirates plus 1 off is minus 184. So Pirates favored on the money line. Cubs favored on the run line. And. Ooh. The numbers are kind of like where you would want them. So, for this game, I'm going to go first half result tie, 5-1. to one. Tigers, Red Sox from Fenway. Alex Fado and Josh Winkowski. Boston minus 190, Detroit plus 160, over under 9.5, over is minus 102, under is minus 120. Tigers plus 1.5 is minus 128, Red Sox minus 1.5 is plus 105. I'm going with the over. Yankees Rays from Tampa. Oof. Um, Garrett Cole and Shane McClanahan. This is a great pitching matchup. The party thinks this is a trap series for the Yankees because the Astros are coming up at home. And I would not be surprised if they lost this series. And yesterday was a complete trap game for them, too. Had blowing the 8 3 lead against the Blue Jays, looking ahead a little bit. Um,. They're minus 130, though. Rays are plus 110 over on their 6.5. Overs minus 112 on theirs minus 108. Yankees minus 1.5 is plus 146. Rays plus 1.5 is minus 178. Um, part of me does think the Rays are going to win this game. Give me them plus 110. 720, Giants, Braves. Logan Webb and Max Freed. Braves minus 162. Giants plus 136. Over on their 8. Overs minus 114. On theirs minus 106. Giants plus one half is minus one sixty four. Braves minus one half is plus one thirty six. 
I think there is a lot of value on the Giants, so I'm going to take them plus 136 at Atlanta. 8 o'clock, Fox Sports won the Cardinals and the Brewers. Miles Mikolas and Corbin Burns, a really good game and a good pitching matchup. Brewers minus 178, Cards plus 150, over under 7F, overs minus 118, unders minus 104. Cards plus 1F is minus 146, Brewers minus 1F is plus 122. Um... I don't like the play, but I'm going to go under 7F at minus 104. I just think this is going to be a grinding pitcher's duel. Blue Jays, White Sox. Jose Barrios and Lance Lynn. Blue Jays, minus 120. White Sox, plus 102. Over on their 9. Overs, minus 120. Others, minus 102. Blue Jays, minus 1F is plus 126. White Sox, plus 1F is minus 152. Um, I'm going with the White Sox, plus 102. This is an underdog I really like. 55.4% chance to win according to ESPN Analytics. Lance Lynn's been terrible, but I think they're going to win this game. Plus 102. 930, the Royals and the Angels. Chris Bubik and Noah Syndergaard. Angels minus 198. Royals plus 166. Over on their 9. Overs minus 104. Unders minus 115. Royals plus 1.5 is minus 20. Angels minus 1.5 is even money. Um... I'm going with the over. Noah Syndergaard has been terrible lately. And Chris Bubik's also been terrible. And last but not least, the D-backs at the Padres. Zach Davies and Yu Darvish. Padres minus 172. D-backs plus 144. Over on their 7. Over is minus 122 on their 7 money. D-backs plus 1.5 is minus 152. Padres minus 1.5 is plus 126. I'm laying the 1.5 with the Padres at plus 126. They are 73.2% chance to win. Almost at 75%, so I'm going to lay them on the run line. Minus one and a half at plus 126. My number for even money is usually 75%, but this is close to it. So I'm going to lay the one and a half with the Padres against the Diamondbacks. All right, now we'll move on to the WNBA from the weekend. We do not have any games today because they're off. On Mondays. So Friday, the Sun over the Storm, 82-71. Commissioner's Cup, the Wings over the Mercury, 93-88. Commissioner's Cup, the Sky over the Dream, 106-100 in overtime. And then on Sunday, the Storm over the Liberty, 81-72 in Sue Bird's final game in New York. Commissioner's Cup, Mystics over the Sun, 71-63. Commissioner's Cup, Fever over the Sky, 89-87. Commissioner's Cup wings over the Sparks 1972 or 82. And the Aces over the Lynx 96 95. So the league will resume on Tuesday. And um, it should be interesting um, to see how some of these teams respond from the weekend after uh, tough losses. And whatnot. All right, now move on to Major League Soccer. Um, we'll go over the results from the weekend. All right, Saturday. Seattle and LAFC, 1-1 draw. LA Galaxy and Portland, 1-1 draw. Red Bulls over Toronto, 2-0. Austin over Club Football, Montreal, 1-0. Columbus, Charlotte, 1-1 draw. Orlando over Houston, 2-1. Philly, Cincinnati, 1-1 draw. Chicago over D.C. United, 1-0. Vancouver over Dallas, 2-0. Salt Lake over San Jose, 2-0. And then Sunday, Atlanta over Miami, 2-0. New England over Minnesota, 2-1. NYCFC, Colorado, 1-1 draw. And KC over Nashville, 2-1. There are no games until Friday. So, we have one game Friday and a bunch of games Saturday and some games on Sunday. So, obviously, we'll preview and pick them all on the podcast when the weekend comes. Now, we'll move on to the Men's College World Series. We have not had a chance to get to this on the show, but we're here. Um, We're going to go over the games up until this point. So, beginning with... Friday, 
Um, double elimination round, Oklahoma over number five seed Texas A&M, 13 to eight. And double elimination round, Notre Dame over nine seed Texas, seven to three. Notre Dame's been the Cinderella team of the tournament. They knocked off um, Tennessee, who was the favorite to win. Now this thing's wide open. Saturday, double elimination round, Arkansas over number two seed Stanford, 17 to two. In double elimination round, Ole Miss over 14 seed Auburn, 5 to 1. Sunday, elimination game, 5 seed Texas A&M over 9 seed Texas, 10 to 2. In double elimination round, Oklahoma over Notre Dame, 6 to 2. All right, two games today, 2 o'clock at ESPN. We have an elimination game between 14 seed Auburn and 2 seed Stanford. I'm trying to see if. FanDuel has it. It looks like they do. Stanford's minus 164. Auburn's plus 134 over under 12.5. Over's minus 108. Under's minus 112. Auburn plus 1.5 is minus 144. Stanford minus 1.5 is plus 118. All right, so Stanford's been awesome this year. Auburn's on a nice run. They just lost to uh, Ole Miss. We know Stanford just got destroyed. By Arkansas. So, um, the loser obviously goes home. The winner advances. I just think Stanford's better. They have more talent. Um, so, I know the scoring's been high. So, I'm going to just continue with the over trend. Over 12 and a half and minus 108. If you could do a same game parlay, I would do Stanford in the over in the parlay. And at seven o'clock, double elimination, or Ole Miss Arkansas, so an SEC game in the College World Series, and it's a lot of fun. Um, it's a pick 'em on each side, minus one ten over under ten half, overs minus one fourteen, unders minus one oh six. Ole Miss minus one half is plus one forty, Arkansas plus one half is minus one seventy two. So Ole Miss is favored on the run line, but the money line is a pick. Um, both these teams played Saturday and they won over Stanford and Auburn, respectively. Um, so both these teams are trying to, uh, stay alive because this is the top half of the bracket. So, um... And Arkansas was, th- was very impressive with their win over Stanford. Ole Miss probably is better. So I'm going to just go with Ole Miss on the money line at minus 110. Here to uh, move on. So it should be a fun rest of the series. And obviously we're going to continue covering it until then. All right, now I'll move on to golf. Um... We had the U.S. Open over the weekend. It was a very fun tournament. And your winner with a score of six under, Matt Fitzpatrick. Tied for second with five under, Will Zalatoris and Scotty Scheffler. They each scored a five under. Fourth place with three under, Hideki Matsuyama. Tied for fifth with two under Colin Mariqua and Rory McElroy. Tied for seventh with one under Adam Hatman, Keegan Bradley, and Denny McCarthy. Tied for tenth and even Joel Dahman and Gary Woodland. Tied for twelfth with one over John Rahm and Seamus Power. Tied for fourteenth with two over Adam Scott, Xander Shoffley, Patrick Cantlay, Sebastian Munoz, Mark Leishman. Cam Triangle, Nick Hardy, Guido Miglizzotti, and Hayden Buckley. 23rd with three over, Ju Hyung Kim. Tied for 27th, or I'm sorry, tied for 24th with four over, Adam Shank, Mackenzie Hughes, Dustin Johnson. Tied for 27th with five over, um, Sam Burns, Aaron Weiss. Thomas Peters, 
and Min Woo Lee. Now I'm just going to go through notables the rest of the way. Tied for 31st with six over Patrick Rogers, Adam Pontnam, Davis Riley, MJ Doffey. Tied for 37th with seven over Jordan Spieth, Matthew Neesmith, Joseph Bromlett, Justin Thomas, Justin Rose, Kyung Hu Lee. Tied for 43rd with eight over Brian Harmon. Tied for 47th with nine over Joachim Neiman and Max Homa. Tied for 49th with 10 over Sam Bennett, Patrick Reed. Tied for 11th with 11 over Bayo Hostler. 55th with 12 over Brooks Kepka. Tied for 56 with 13 over Bryson DeChambeau, Tyrell Hatton. Tied for 61st with 17 over Harry English. And among those cut, Wyndham Clark, Brett Horschel, Cam Young, Kevin Kisner, Stuart Singh, Vito Pereira, Sanjay M, Sergio Garcia, Webb Simpson, Corey Connors, Shane Lowry, Jason Kokorak, Saiwoo Kim, Daniel Berger, Harold Varner III, Brandon Grace, Sonny Cotillara, Taylor Gooch, Taylor Hogue, Kevin Na, Tony Fino, Luke List, Nate Taylor, Scott Stallings, Alex Loren, Francesco Molinari, Roger Sloan, Cam Smith, Luis Olson, Kevin Katayama, Victor Perez, Lucas Griffin, Victor Hovland, Tommy Fleetwood, Bo Hogg, Patton Kazir, Seb Straka, Evan Van Royen, Phil Mickelson, Danny Lee, Lucas Herbert, and that's it among notables. We only had one NASCAR race the whole weekend, and it was in the truck series. It was on Saturday night from Knoxville. And your winner of the race, Todd Gilliland. In second, John Hunter Nemechek. Third, Zane Smith. Fourth, Ty Majeski. Fifth, Stuart Friesen. Sixth, Derek Krause. Seventh, Matt Crafton. Eighth, Grant Effinger. Ninth, Tyler Ankrum. Tenth, Ben Rhodes. Eleventh, Buddy Kofoid. The rest, Christian X, Cam Smith, Matt DiMendetto, Haley Deegan, Colby Howard, Dylan Westbrook, Lawless Allen, Timmy Hill, Chase Purdy, Jack Wood, Tanner Gray, Dean Thompson, Joey Gase, Blaine Perkins, Kaz Grella, Brayton Laster, Chris Wright, Spencer Boyd, Devin Rouse, Thad Moffitt, Brett Moffitt, Bryson Mitchell, Jessica Friesen, Jason Hosfar, and Tyler Carpenter. Okay, right, so Truck Series resumes Friday night at 8 at Nashville, Xfinity, Saturday at 3.30 in Nashville, and Cup Sunday evening in Nashville. So all three uh, series in Nashville coming up over the weekend so it should be a lot of fun all right now we'll move on to news and notes for today um last night news broke that the stars to hire pete the boar as their new head coach um interesting hire um pete the boar is a guy that's won pretty much everywhere he's went um Took the Devils to the Stanley Cup Final. Took the Sharks to the Stanley Cup Final. Came close with Vegas last year. And then gets fired this year because they don't make the playoffs. Dallas made the final in 2020. So there is some experience on that team. Um... It's a very talented team that the board gets to take over. There's any expectations in a big market in Dallas. So pressure's on, and um, I think that the board is going to be a better fit there than people may come to realize. John Cooper says he never thought of taking Andre Vasilevsky out of Game 2. 
Even if I did, I don't think he would have come out. There was controversy in the Phillies Nationals game on Friday night as um, Dave Martinez got ejected after umps ruled interference to give the Phillies a eventual winning run. Um, so it was a very controversial win for the Phillies on Friday night. Your main Mercedes popped bottles like a World Series champ after getting signed by the Giants. We'll see how he does with San Francisco after that cute little run he had with the White Sox and then kind of uh, tailed off. Michael Lorenzen of the Angels is the latest pitcher to say baseball is playing with the ball after pitch hit Justin Upton in the head. So this is an issue that baseball has to address with these pitchers speaking out about uh, these uh, hits um, that some of these players are taking. Anthony Rendon out for the year with... Um, he, as he's getting rich surgery. That is a brutal loss for the Nats. They paid him big money to be the third guy with Trout and Otani. And I feel like he's been hurt. And really hasn't been the same player since he left the Nationals. Good news for the Red Sox. Chris Sale begins rehab today. With the goal of mid-July return. So if they get him back, it's like getting a trade acquisition back. Mookie Betts has a cracked rib. With no timetable yet for return as he heads to the injury list. That is not great for the Dodgers. Manny Machado was helped off the field yesterday. As he appeared to roll his ankle after slipping on first base. As he heads to the injury list too. As he will be out for several weeks after um, being held off the field. And uh, as he sprained his ankle. That is a brutal beat for the Padres. Um, Machado really was among the front runners for the National League MVP. And this obviously takes a hit for his candidacy. Mets considering bringing back Max Scherzer back as soon as next Sunday. If re-up start this week goes well, that's really big for the Mets. Um, Jason Tatum's father had a Heartfelt post on Instagram praising Jason in a really neat Instagram post. Some trash talk between John Morant and Draymond Green. Um, Draymond says to John Morant, Memphis wasn't even under their mind. And then John now wants Golden State on Christmas. Um, I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's going to be Warriors Celtics on Christmas because usually it's the finals rematch. On Christmas. So that's why I expect it to be. Because wasn't the Bucks Suns on Christmas last year? I think it was Celtics Bucks actually. And then the Suns played at night or something. But usually the finals rematch is on Christmas. Um, The Commissioner's Cup Finals for the WNBA. 500,000. Prize pool July 26th. It will be uh, Vegas, the one seed, and then Chicago is the two seed. So it'll be Aces Sky. So that's a good matchup. Couple big call ups in Major League Baseball Riley Green and then O'Neill Cruz. So obviously, Riley Green started Saturday, and um, O'Neill Cruz, I think, will start whenever Pittsburgh plays next. Some very interesting news over the weekend. Um, Kenny Atkinson to stay with the Warriors and will not become the Hornets' next head coach. I feel like we've seen this before where a coach goes into an agreement and um, doesn't really become official. And we did. We had it in the NFL when Josh McDaniels almost went to Indy and backed out. And Andrew Luck was still an active player back then. And then obviously Frank Reich takes the Colts job. And now McDaniels obviously with the Raiders. So Atkinson really just pulled the Josh McDaniels here. I wonder if he just felt the Charlotte's just a dysfunctional mess organization. And Michael Jordan is just a bad owner. 
That's what I think. And then obviously it's really good for Golden State that they have um, their top assistant back with the team because obviously they're losing Mike Brown to San, uh, to uh, Sacramento. I almost said San Francisco. The Warriors are technically San Francisco. Um, so some NBA stuff. Um, the Hornets and the Kings are expected to be suitors for Kevin Looney. Andrew Wiggins says he'd love to stay with the Warriors. When asked about a possible extension, Terrence Ross is on the trade block and the asking price of multiple second-round draft picks. Bradley Beal apparently has made his decision already as he's been recruited a lot and already has made his decision on future but won't share. That means he's out. I think he'll be on another team next season, but I say that pretty much the last three summers I've said that. The Rockets are shopping Eric Gordon as they want a first-round pick in return for him. Bob McKellop retires from men's college basketball. Um, legendary coach from Davidson. Um, one of the best coaches in college basketball, if you ask me. He was so good. And obviously now Davidson has to look for a new coach. Um... So the favorites for the Bruins vacancy, um, former Rangers coach David Quinn and Kraken assistant Jay Leach. Um, what about Barry Trotz? Like, David Quinn was a bad coach with the Rangers. You saw it happen once after he got fired. Glant comes in or in the Eastern Conference Finals. So you've seen that movie. And Jay Leach, very unproven. So... Those two are the favorites, but why not bring in Barry Trotz? Like, come on. So the Oilers are close to signing um, Jay Woodcroft to a three-year deal. Um, so that's really good for them, as Woodcroft really uh, did a nice job after the Oilers made their coaching change. So, um, well-deserved for him. Kyrie Irving may test free agency as contract talks between the Nets and Irving have gone stagnant. Lakers, Knicks, and Clippers among interested teams. Um, I'm crossing off the Knicks. I just don't see them signing him. They saw the baggage that the Nets had to go through with him. I think it's one of the two L.A. teams. I think the Lakers make a lot of sense because of LeBron. And the Clippers, I think, would be interesting because Kyrie, the pressure won't be on him and all the pressure will be on Kawhi and Paul George and he'd be the third best guy on that team. So, if I'm Kyrie, I'd go to one of the L.A. teams. There'll be a ton of pressure on him if he goes to the Knicks. But I just don't think the Knicks should go for him. They saw, like I said, they saw the baggage that the Nets went through with him last year. If anything, I think a move to LA would be good for Kyrie to get out of New York. I know he's still being a big market with a ton of pressure, but those two LA teams are closer to, to, to contending than the Knicks are. I know people say, the Lakers are bad and they have a bleak future, blah, blah, blah. They have a bleak long-term future. Short-term, I think they, they can manage something with the right off-season moves. And I think Kyrie would actually fit well with LA. But they just have to uh, give um, AD and LeBron some pay cuts. And even Kyrie would have to take less money, too. And then um, they would just have to uh, bring back some role players, not all of them, and then uh, try to go for for um some of the other um good minimum guys that are ring hunting. Nicholas Backstrom underwent successful procedure on left hip on Friday. No timetable for his return. 
Shade and Sharp has high expectations ahead of the draft as he says he wants to be a GOAT. The Cleveland Cavaliers are interested in trading down as they're open to moving back from 14 to acquire future first round pick. This looks like that they're star hunting. That's what that tells me. League owners ripped the Oakland Athletics for fielding a non-competitive team and hoarding revenue-sharing money. Yikes. The Brewers DFA Lorenzo Cain um, hitting 179 this year. Um, one of the, the uh, biggest free agent busts over the last several years. Him and Dallas Keuchel. Two huge free agent flops. I know uh, Lorenzo had some nice years with Milwaukee, but that signing really turned out to be a flop signing here towards the end. Brutal news in tennis. Naomi Osaka withdraws from the Wimbledon due to a leg injury and has not played at a London major since 2019. So that stinks for tennis. At least we're getting Serena back, which is awesome. Um, Draymond trolled the Celtics as he made an edit to the Celtics' 18 banners shirt after winning the finals. Um, Deshaun Watson may get a season ban as NFL plans to argue for significant suspension of Watson over alleged sexual assault and misconduct. That's obviously going to happen. And last funny one, um, Peyton Manning rocks an Omaha hat. As he was rocking a Omaha hat with his legendary audible while in Omaha, which is pretty cool. And that's a very memorable um, audit um, in the NFL when you talk about um, memorable things that quarterback says before um, taking a snap. All right, last but not least, my best bet of the day brought to you by FanDuel. Um, I actually considered going college baseball with best bet with Ole Miss, but I'm no college baseball expert. So, um, I'm going to go with Major League Baseball, and I'm going to go with I don't love, love the play. But I think it's a good play considering where the ESPN analytics numbers were. I'm going to lay the Padres run line minus one and a half. I'm going to lay a half unit on it against the Dimebacks. Plus 126. I just think the value is really good. So I'm going to lay a half unit minus one and a half with the San Diego Padres against the Arizona Dimebacks for my best bet of the day. All right, so that's it for today's show. And I'll be back. Um, tomorrow with everything um, to recap and looking ahead to WNBA tomorrow. I might have an activity. We have pri- I think we have primaries tomorrow. I'm not 100% sure. But if you do, we'll talk about them. And obviously, news and notes and best bet as well. Hope you guys have a great day, everyone.